Hi friends, welcome to Opa Studies YouTube channel. This is part 21 in Azure Synapse Analytics playlist. In this video, we are going to discuss about administrative accounts in Synapse SQL in Synapse Analytics and also we are going to discuss, discuss about characteristics of admin accounts in Synapse SQL. Okay, so firstly, what is administrative accounts and what is the role of these administrative accounts in the Synapse SQL? Actually, whenever you try to create a Azure Synapse workspace, once you're done with your uh, creation of that particular Synapse resource, you will be seeing two admin uh, IDs already available for you or already created for you. One is called server admin, another one is called active directory admin. Okay, so when you go to Azure Synapse workspace and when you go to properties, that is where you can see two things. One is Azure admin user, sorry, SQL admin user, another one is SQL active directory admin. So this one is the user ID which will use the SQL authentication actually. So this will use SQL authentication and uh, if you want to change the password of that thing you can you need you, you need to use this reset admin password to change it at any time and this is actually the ID with which you created your Synapse workspace and this ID will be added automatically as a active directory admin okay so to identify these accounts as I said you need to go to the Synapse account and you need to navigate to the property tab so let me practically show you that so let me go to Synapse. So this is my Azure subscription. So I have a Synapse here called Anu Dev Synapse. Let me open this Synapse account here and then let me navigate to the properties here. So when I go properties, I should see both the admin accounts which is associated with this Synapse workspace. One is admin, SQL admin user. So this is the ID which is, uh, which is going to act as SQL admin. And of course, you can give any name here. While you are creating a Synapse workspace, you can give any name here. That I will show practically in just a bit. And also another one is your own uh, ID uh, with which uh, uh, you created this resource. And that ID will be added as a Active Directory Admin, Azure Active Directory Admin. So these two IDs uh, can be used to connect with any kind of SQL in the Synapse. So in Synapse, you have two kinds of SQLs, right? One is serverless SQL pool, another one is dedicated SQL pool. So with all the databases, whatever you create inside these two kind of pools, so with any database, these two IDs can be connected. So these two IDs act, are going to act as admins basically. So using this, you can create new users, new logins, you can assign any user any permission, you can delete databases, everything you can do. So because basically these are like admin IDs. And here, here, if you go to SQL Active Directory Admin, from here you can change it. For example, if you don't want this user to act as a Active Directory Admin, if you want some other user, then you can use this Set Admin option and then you can search for any other uh, Active Directory ID to set as a admin. Okay. Not only individual ID, you can create act Azure Active Directory group inside the Azure Active Directory and then you can use that group as well here. So group means, for example, once you have a group, so inside the, that group, uh, all the users, so in Azure, right, you can create Active Directory groups, Azure Active Directory groups. So group has thing like nothing but like a, a number of members. So multiple members will be added as one group. So all these members is going to act as an admin once you create any group and add it as a EAD admin in Synapse. Okay, so all that can be done. So now, as I said, uh, this particular ID, right, SQL admin user. So this can be created automatically. I mean, uh, when you are creating a resource, you can give any name here. I will practically show you that. Let me go to the portal. Let me go to home screen. Let me try to create a new resource. And here I am going to search for Synapse Analytics because I am interested to create a Synapse Analytics account. So let me select that option and let me click this create button to create the Synapse Analytics resource. Uh, we discussed these things in our initial videos of this Azure playlist, right? I mean Azure Synapse playlist, right? So please watch them. So here let me select one resource group name, maybe Mahir RG. And then here let me give a name, maybe I want to give a name like Mahir Synapse. So this is the name I want to give. And then uh, if you see, if you want, if you already have some DDLS account, you can associate with that account. Or you can uh, you can create a new one. You can give create click this create new, and then here you can give maybe Mahir ADLS Gen2. So this is the Gen2 account which I want to create. Let me click OK, and then inside this Gen2 account, I want to have a file system that is one container, maybe like a Synapse demo. So this is the container I want to add inside that ADLS Gen2 account. So let me click OK, and then here. Let me click next to the security. So this is where it will ask you to provide a user ID and password which is going to act as SQL administrator credentials. So here I can give maybe like Mahir. So my own ID as uh, my own name as a user ID and then I can set any password here. So let me enter one password here. Uh, 
so let me very quickly type confirm password as well and then simply click next tags then review place create so now what will happen now the moment this particular synapse workspace creates it is going to contain uh, that mahir as a sql admin okay because that is what the name we given here mahir is as a sql admin so let me hit this create button and uh, let me practically show you that as well so let's wait for workspace account to create here deployment is started so usually this deployment takes uh, some 3 to 4 minutes okay great our deployment completed successful let me click this go to resource and now uh, let me open my azure synapse uh, which is created just now mahir synapse and here if i navigate to the properties menu i should see my sql admin user id and also my own outlook account as uh, active directory admin see this is active directory admin and this is the sql admin user if i want to change the password once again i can click this reset admin password and i can do that so the the idea to explain here is these two ids are going to act as admin ids like system admin ids or server admin ids uh, to do anything on the synapse sql so when i say synapse sql as i said before so synapse sql will be containing two things right one is dedicated sql and also another one is serverless sql so if you connect either of these services maybe this one or this one so any server you connect inside those servers if you want to create any uh, databases tables or objects anything can happen very easily using these two admin ids actually okay and this is the end point to connect with the dedicated sql pool uh, server and this is the end point to connect with serverless sql pool server okay so let me copy this end point let me practically show you that so let me go to uh, my sql server management studio let's assume i want to connect from here uh, using my uh, uh, admin active directory admin so then what i should do i should be typing here my account name here and i should use authentication type of active azure active directory universal with multi factor authentication once you select that let's click connect here so this is going to connect me to the serverless sql pool endpoint successful let's wait for that to happen here so i just clicked connect button right so here i should enter a password so let me type my password here and then let me hit sign in button here so this is i am trying to show you uh, like uh, whether it is actually allowing me to connect or not with that admin ids okay and uh, of course i can open a synapse workspace studio and i can show you that as well but showing from the sql server management studio will give more sense actually see here i connected to my serverless sql pool server endpoint and now inside this serverless sql pool endpoint i can create my database or whatever i want to do right i can do with these admin ids usually in real time we will not do with these ids we will be creating a separate logins and we will doing that so now if i expand the databases i i can expand my master see you can see one master database by default and if you expand this master databases uh, and also let, let me expand this securities first at the server level and if you go to logins you can see here see this is the sql authentication id sql admin id right you can see that is also available here okay so this is what the main idea so for example let me disconnect this and if you, if i want to connect with the sql authentication let me click this connect button once again and let me paste my uh, serverless sql pool endpoint here i should select ser sql uh, sql server authentication and let me type my password here okay and let me click hit connect button here so now i am going to connect with my serverless sql pool server using my sql admin id okay using sql authentication method see it is connected right and uh, once it connected as i said i can open a new query window i can create a database and everything okay so it is the same case with the dedicated sql pool as well you can take this dedicated sql pool endpoint from here you can copy by clicking this here and then if you want to you can connect it here let me do that one as well so let me use the same uh, sql admin id and then let me type my password here and uh, let me click this remember password and let me hit connect so this is going to connect me to the dedicated sql pool server actually okay so this is how the things will happen here see we successfully connected to dedicated sql pool as well okay so let me disconnect this and now let me go to presentation so now let me go to the next slide so serverless as i said before by this time you get an early data right so this server admin is the admin which 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 can be used to authenticate with your uh, databases uh, using the sql authentication by using username and password and uh, this sir this sql server creates this account as a login in the master database we have seen right inside the master database we can see whatever the id so in my case my, my id name is mahir right 
so this id we can see as a login inside my master database right and now coming to the azure active directory admin id as i said so this admin id must uh, can be uh, act as a admin id for your synapse sql and uh, not only that you, you can you can either add your individual id or you can create a group and you can add that group as a active directory admin as well okay so then let, let me go to the next slide where i want to explain the use of these admin ids actually or use of these admin accounts so these are the basic use actually so these accounts are at, go, can automatically connect with your sql databases on the server that means either it may be dedicated or it may be serverless with the both kind of databases it can easily connect and also these accounts has a permissions to create alter and drop the databases or it can create logins users in the master databases and also these ids can update the ip firewall rules for the servers as well and also these two ids uh, can help you to add any new users or new logins to the db manager or login manager roles and also this these accounts is capable enough to view the details from this system table so this is the system table which will going to give list of all logins whatever you have inside your sql server right so if you let me go to my uh, workspace once again and let me hit this open button to open my synapse workspace and then let me practically try to execute this query right whatever i said right the uh, query on top of this system table so let me practically execute that and show you that so this is my synapse workspace which is right now loading okay so now here what i can do i can go to this development tab and i can hit this uh, new script file here and then i should make sure to select my serverless sql pool here so see here i selected my serverless sql pool here right serverless sql pool built in so now i can execute the query on top of that particular uh, table system table select star from sys dot sql logins so this is the system table in which you have all the logins available for your sql server in in this case it is for the serverless so i click this run button here you can see this table return the data as well and now if you clearly see here you can see my uh, I, my sql admin id is available here and which is for sql and, and, and it is enabled also you can see is disabled column value is false here right so so this is what i want to explain in this video like uh, what are the two admin ids which will automatically come for along with your synapse workspace creation and the use of these admin ids so in future in our upcoming videos we are going to create some databases uh in the dedicated and serverless sql pool and also we are going to create some logins and users to authenticate with the databases by assigning some roles and all okay why because in real time uh users will not be allowed to use these admin accounts uh they will create a separate logins and user accounts and that user accounts will be granted with certain uh, roles and responsibilities on the databases and with that they will do their development work okay so i hope you enjoyed this video thank you for watching this video Please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notification whenever I add videos. Thank you so much.